Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! right. You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. My name is Timmy Joe, making videos about computers all over the internet. And we're back today with a proper video here with a nice little uh, system set up on the old test bench. Uh, you know, it's a Skylake processor. We got 16 gigs of T-Force, uh, this new T1 gaming RAM they sent over for me to have a look at, as well as uh, I purchased this myself, but a GTX 1660 Ti, which I thought would be pretty cool to look at in a uh, upcoming video because, you know, whatever. But uh, what's more important here is we have the test bench set up. We're going to be doing some Skylake non-K overclocking, if it's still possible. But before we get to that, uh, basically we have a sponsor on the channel here. Sponsor this video is IVC VPN. I want to thank them very much for sponsoring this video. IVC VPN is a wonderful VPN service that is very cost effective. And if maybe you want to just browse the uh, internet privately and securely, or maybe you're in the European Union and uh, you're worried about Article 7 or 13 or 28 or 75 or whatever it is, the one that's going to block your access to awesome copyright friendly content that they decided was not so copyright friendly. Well, you could use IVC VPN and use it to browse anywhere in the world, maybe from the uh, good old free America or over here in Canada. So uh, check out the links in the description and use code TJ20, and that will allow you to uh, save $20 off a lifetime VPN plan. That sounds pretty cool. Links in the description, thanks very much. On to the content though. Um, yes, we have a 6700 non-K that I picked up on a decent deal after I acquired a Z170 motherboard, so the original Skylake chipset, uh, that used to allow you, at least at launch, uh, with certain motherboards, allows you to BCLK overclock, and then Intel decided, no, you're not allowed. And it's kind of confusing, actually, because if you check out the BIOS, it looks like you could maybe do it. Uh, if you go in here, you know, you go into Expert, and I have a CPU base clock overclock here of 120 applied, which if you actually, uh, here, we'll up the value there, that should give me a 4 gigahertz overclock, but, dommage, when you go into Windows, it's not applied. So, I'm pretty sure, well, let's check out the BIOS version here is, uh, you know, motorcycles got to drive by, but the BIOS version here is, uh, I think, 17? 170? To me, that looks like a really old BIOS, but if we go over to my web browser here, um, yeah, I've been looking into this and trying to see, like, Where's the cutoff? Like, is this BIOS one that was, you know, you could overclock with originally until a BIOS update kind of put the kibosh on that? Is it even possible that maybe Windows has stopped this through some sort of microcode update? I had read that that might have been a possibility. I don't know how that really works. We might have to go to Windows 7 to do this video. I don't know. But I've been looking into, is it still a thing? And uh, in Skylake, non-K, BCLK in 2018, this forum post uh, over on Reddit seems to you know lead me to believe that it's possible. You look at when they did the change uh, and Antec over here saying Skylake overclocking was removed uh, in February of 2016. So maybe this BIOS is just too old. But luckily, there are some things you can do. Uh, at least we're going to try. Uh, and if you head over to uh, DeBauer's post on overclocking.guide, uh, he actually did a whole forum post on this and did a bunch of BIOSes. Now, there is a problem with this, though. Um, none of the BIOSes are still available on this website. But I will, however, link one. I did find it below uh, over here on this website on Player. Uh, Intel non-K processors can now be overclocked on Z170. And I found my Z170 A SLI Plus motherboard. And I downloaded that BIOS. And it's 11T. We're going to get to the bottom of it, though. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and update the BIOS on here and then if it works we can see how far we can take this puppy because if you uh you know check out the stock speeds on this it really only turbos up to 3.7 in like high workloads like cinebench or you know uh during renders and stuff one core will go up to like 3.9 gigahertz like that's really really low for what is ultimately a pretty awesome processor but in this day and age with maybe a bit better of a video card than this would be pretty long in the tooth, I think, at four, like you know, 6700 non-K. 
you could you probably take a Ryzen 1500X and get the same performance over, actually you could do better, because this one won't even do 800 in Cinebench as it is. So as it stands, a Ryzen 1500X is faster than this processor, and unless we can unlock the BIOS, this processor is gonna be pretty garbage to me. So let me go ahead and try and update it, and we'll see what happens. looks different and uh, this might actually break some like uh, ability to judge the temperatures from what I've read uh, on these MSI motherboards so you kind of got to be careful okay dynamic mode I don't know what I'm doing I don't know if you can tell oh, there we go base clock base clock and I've seen people go like 120 no problem with like uh, we'll have to change the DRAM frequency there to 2560 for now and go over to voltage and do like a 1.22 maybe well we'll see we'll see if that works so yes that's what we want to do we want to apply this fatty dove racing that's the ssd that's on this oh my god it's so cool forgot i should have put that on the table that's the SSD I'm using to boot this thing. I want, I'm going to do a review on that SSD. Fatty Dove Racing. <laughs> Super awesome. I know some other people have already done it. It's kind of funny. So let's check out the speeds I was getting before. There we go. So I was getting 790 in Cinebench, which a Ryzen 1500X can certainly beat. Even probably a 1400 could beat. A 2400G uh, could beat. You know, like they'll get 850 in Cinebench with like a you know half decent overclock. And then we were getting 1970 in uh, Cinebench R20, and we see here that it did turbo up to four gigahertz on one core, but uh, uh, during the render it does a sustained like uh, 3.7. Uh, don't don't look at those numbers. So I'm seeing. Temperatures, core, oh, look at that. We're running at 4.08 gigahertz. But there's no C state. It's not going down. I wonder, I guess that's just what happens. You're all automatically putting a harsher load all the time on your processor that it's gonna run hotter and uh, that's not necessarily a good thing, but we'll see what we can do here. Can we beat the old Cinebench record? And it's working. It is working for sure. And I don't see, do we have a temperature problem? Apparently one of the temperature sensors is getting up to 127 degrees, and the other one is as well, but I was told to expect this from some research I did. So that's not terribly bad, but it's not great. 873, wow. So I never heard this ramp up at all. So. I would imagine we're all good there. That's pretty, can we run, we'll run Cinebench R20 and then I'll see if I can get a little bit higher overclock, like four point, like that, that cooler should be able to max. It's pretty warm in here though. It's got lots of lights on and it's a warm day outside. So I don't know, let's run Cinebench R20. Maybe Cinebench R20 will break it. Let's see. AVX workload, you know, not bad. All right, seems to be working. So. I will treasure on here and see what we can do to max out this particular processor. I might even open up some windows because it would help in this particular situation. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, um, so before we get into whatever I was going to do, the overclocking, um, yeah, it just completed Cinebench R20 and it did it at 1400 when its original score was almost 2000. So it's obviously throttling. Uh, in a longer workload uh, at high, you know, there, there, there's something going on here. So I guess we're gonna have to figure that out. Whoa, look at those tentacles fly. We got her done and I'm hoarse and my voice hurts and my throat hurts. I'm sick or something. 
So forgive me as I scream at you, because it's just going to make things worse. I'm running Fire Strike here so we can see the gaming benefits of doing this. 4.65 gigahertz. That's almost a whole gigahertz faster than this thing runs at stock speeds. It certainly is on all cores. It's, it's ridiculous. So there's a lot of benefits to doing this, especially for gaming. You're going to see higher FPS, but there are some downsides that certain applications it's not going to make a lot of sense and i don't know where you're even going to come across this whole situation where you find a good z170 motherboard for cheap and then you hunt for a cpu and you're only able to find a non-k for a good price it could happen and this works with uh, like the pentiums and the i3s and the i5s as well so there is a reason to do this 14,381. it's pretty decent because watch this i got the stock results <laughs> here we go 13,609. So we got a 400 and 400 and uh, th 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 almost 800 better points in, in Fire Strike. That's really good. But look at that physics score 14,318 versus 14,000 versus 11,552. So there is a, certainly a benefit to doing this. Okay, 4.5 gigahertz. Real, real good. So I'm going to go back over here and we'll run Cena Bench and there is a way to check the temperatures. If you just read the damn websites on this thing, my biggest problem was that there wasn't really great YouTube videos on doing this. Der Bauer wasn't making, you know, videos back then or something. But you can use Hardware Info 64 to check the package temperature. So it was listed on his website there. I should have just looked. So see, 4.65.9. That's really, 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 really good. And we see package temperature. She's, you know, running 31, real calm and cool, even though it's not a delitted processor, because we're not going anywhere near 5 gigahertz here, so it shouldn't be a problem. And then we'll run Cinebench and we'll see what kind of results we can get. One, two, three, go! And we'll see 50 degrees instantly, 62. So this wasn't ramping up uh, while it was doing stuff like this. So I actually put the um, header at full speed for the uh, CPU header for the, the fans. And then I put one of those Noctua inline adapters, those low noise adapters in there, just so that I could feel the air pumping off of there. But these fans don't make lots of noise at like 1,000, 1,200 RPM. That's probably where this is at. And it's providing decent cooling performance because you see we're only getting up to 63 degrees. Real nice there. And we see here it's sticking at uh, 4646.8 megahertz. That's real decent. So what are we going to have for a score? 1,000. 1,003. Yeah. So I was able to get this to 4.8 gigahertz and actually run Cinebench once or twice. And it got like uh, 1,010. So there was totally not worth pushing. I had to put the volts up from, uh, it's running at 1.335 here. I had to push those volts all the way up to uh, 1.37 to get it. It just didn't make any sense to run it any faster than this. There was no benefit. But as you see right now, the, the, the clocks aren't going down. So there is a problem with not only some temperature reporting, uh, both on the motherboard and how it kind of deals with the fan speed and stuff, but it also has a problem with um, actually doing any C states. So there's no power states that are bringing this down to like 1200. So this is gonna suck more power, not terribly much power. Like this thing, uh, full load get, is only running about uh, 150 watts to 180 watts in Cinebench on my uh, watt meter down there, as you see there on the screen. So nothing too, too bad. So we've increased some seriously decent performance, but there are some caveats for this, for sure. So let's go ahead and we'll load our website here. Really good, better score. And, you know, for gaming, this is going to net you some better FPS. But if you actually read the two websites that I'm going to put in the description, uh, no iGPU, so you can't use the integrated graphics with this BIOS. That's no good. No dynamic change of CPU frequency, no C states, no turbo mode. CPU temperature reading is incorrect, often locked at 100 Celsius. Well, it's not in this particular instance. It's just the package temperature works in Harbor Info 64. ADS instruction sets have very low performance and Windows XP ACPI not supported. So if we go back to DeBauer's original post here, he had all the information in there, but you see he says right there, Hardware Info 64 is the best way. No iGPU, no turbo mode, AVX is screwed. So when I was running Cinebench R20, which uses AVX instructions, that's why the performance tanked once we did this. So this is not going to be a good mod for any sort of, you know, rendering or blender or, uh, you know, getting, running Cinebench R20, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, so like this is a just a fun thing to do. 
And right now, it's not a very valid thing to really work out. And I wonder if KB Lake would work with this. Huh. Can you BCLK overclock KB Lake on Z170? Will non K KB Lake OC on Z170 boards? Um, this is just a freaking Linus, or no, it's a Reddit post. Deleted Skylake, but you can definitely change vCore. Uh, Coffee Lake modding, that's no. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is probably isn't gonna work with KB Lake. If you know different, let me know in the comments below. So, all in all, this was a lot of fun. We increased the clock speed on this from 3.6 or 3.7 gigahertz on all cores to 4.7 gigahertz roughly, or 4.65. So almost a whole gigahertz gain here. This is definitely gonna net better FPS if you happen upon this specific scenario. I like that we were able to get it so high, 4.65 is pretty high, and going from a cinnamon score of under 800 to 1,000 is really, really, really half decent. But all in all, like, like I said, what is the use case scenario for this? Well, it's going to be pretty specific for a handful of you guys out there. But I thought it was good to run this test in 2019 because when I was doing my information on this, like researching, trying to see if it still worked, like there was some talk of uh, maybe a microcode update to Windows that were Windows 10 not being able to support this. But th 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 I think this actually brings this platform, the 6700 non-K, uh, into the mainstream and allows it to, you know, gives it some more life for a little bit longer. Let's say you have a GTX 1070, 1080. I would definitely be doing this, even maybe with the 1660 Ti, because it's going to net you some better FPS and definitely better in CPU intensive games. And as long as they're not AVX. And I did check that out before we go. Um, games don't use AVX, except for DirectX 12 is going to start, or maybe has started, so you might run into a DirectX 12 only game or whatever where you have problems running AVX workloads or you have lesser performance doing this mod. But it's going to be like, for the most part with most games, you're going to be fine doing this. So go ahead and do it. So I'm out watching me, Joe, Instagram and Twitter. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'm sorry that this video is kind of all over the place, but... What do you do? And I want to thank Ivis EVBN for being the sponsor of this video. There is a way you can save $20 on a lifetime membership if you check out the comments below. I've got links there for Ivis and all that stuff. So thanks to them for sponsoring the video. And uh, yeah, 6700 Skylake overclocked almost a gigahertz here in 2019. And it was a lot of fun. I'll see you guys in another video. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.